So I'm going to be talking about hypothermia, and I'm going to be comparing it between a high-producing dairy cow and a piglet. So kind of just a broad definition. Um, so you already know that hypo is a prefix that means kind of below. Uh, and therm is a suffix that means like an animal having a specific kind of body temperature. So hypothermia means it's below their normal body temperature. Um, and hypothermia occurs when the body loses heat faster than it can produce heat. And it's a poten potentially dangerous drop in body temperature, usually caused by prolonged exposure to cold temperatures. I'll give you guys a second to write that down. So just some general symptoms, um, especially ones that we would feel, like shivering, slow, shallow breathing. You would have a weak pulse. Um, clumsiness or lack of coordination, drowsiness, low energy, confusion, um, one of the more dangerous things, especially in people. Because you have confusion and self-awareness, it's actually hard to tell if you have it for yourself. Like, you're not kind of sure what's going on. Um, so that's why you kind of need someone else with you. And then you can have loss of consciousness, um, and then you would have like bright red skin and be cold, and this is especially true for infants. Um, so then you have the thermal neutral zone. I know we've already kind of talked about it in class and in videos, so kind of gloss over it. Um, so this is basically when the basal rate of heat production is equal to the rate of heat loss to the environment, um, and it's only the basal metabolic rate is necessary. Um, so you can kind of see here between the lower critical temperature and the upper critical temperature where the thermal neutral zone would be. So kind of below that, that's when you can get run the risk of hypothermia. Um, if you go above that, then it's hyperthermia. So with um, piglets, so hypothermia is most dangerous and serious in piglets zero to seven days, because their ideal internal temperature is going to be around 101.5 to 102.5. Um, so they want an environmental temperature of around 93.25. Um, and this is true for like single piglets. If you have several that are able to huddle together, you can go a little lower to 77 to 86 degrees, um, but their more lower critical temperature if they're by themselves is 88 degrees. Um, and piglets are especially dangerous to hypothermia because they don't have any brown adipose tissue, and those are the thermogenic cells where they can produce heat, so they're not able to like produce heat from those cells. Um, so instead of having this brown adipose tissue, they use glucose to produce heat. Um, so one kind of constant battle they have is that they have to balance the amount of glucose they can use to produce heat and then keeping their blood glucose levels regulated. Um, so after seven days, they can develop something that's called glucogenesis, where they're able to kind of create their own glucose. Um, but below the seven days, they're not able to. Um, that goes back to why it's most dangerous in piglets zero to seven days, because they're not able to... Um, perfectly produce their own glucose, so they need a good external heat so that they don't have to use glucose to produce their own heat. Um, so signs for piglets, um, if you, um, to kind of show if it might be hypothermia, um, so they'll hunter under light or together, because huddling together decreases the amount of surface area exposed to outside temperature. Um, and then they'll also bury themselves in the bedding, kind of going back to they're trying to have a little exposed surface area. Um, they'll have erect hair coat, shivering, um, hypoglycemia, and that's where like their blood um, glucose levels will run low. And that, again, is going back to they'll use um, glucose in their body to produce heat, so then the blood glucose levels will go low because of that. Um, they might have convulsion, um, slow heart rate, and then death normally occurs 24 to 36 hours after you notice the first symptom. And then the older piglet, like an older piglet is, the more likely they are to recover from this, but the younger they are, the more likely it is to be fatal. Um, so just here's just some temperatures. Um, to kind of keep it out, like the minimum temperature where um, hypothermia can kind of start occurring. Um, 
So you have different like ages um, and where they're located, like if they're in the farrying house, um, the early wean, like three weeks and over, weaned, grower, finishing. Um, so as they get older, they are able to handle lower temperatures, um, especially the younger they are, the more they need those higher temperatures. So kind of um, some treatment and some preventative measures. Uh, you can give them a hypoglycemia treatment. Um, again, just trying to increase those glucose levels um, so they are, are able to produce more heat. Um, you can obviously add additional heating. Um, make sure that there's dry bedding. Um, obviously, wet bedding will just make them colder faster. You want dry bedding. And you can just add in more so that they are able to bury themselves in it. Um, and then give them more food or, or like a higher energy dense food so they are able to grab all those nutrients that they can from it. So with cows, um, so their normal internal temperature is around 101. Um, so as we kind of already mentioned before, for a high producing dairy cow, their lower critical temperature is negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously like hypothermia is not as common in them. Um, I just have, just as a comparison for beef cows, um, what their lower critical temperatures are, can you kind of see the difference? Um, so they can, like, dairy cows are more likely to get mild hypothermia, it's not as likely to be severe, because they are able to handle much lower temperatures. And then because of, oh. because they're producing all that milk, so they're just having more going on internally that's kind of as an extra heat source. If that kind of makes sense. Um, and something I won't get into much, um, because they have such a low, low critical temperature, their upper critical temperature is not that high, so they do run more of the risk of hyperthermia. So um, just some clinical science, again for dairy cows it's not as common, um, but they will show like shivering, you have the increased pulse, um, cold nostrils, you have pale hooves. Um, you're more likely to see this again in beef cows, um, but it's just good to know even if you have dairy cows just to know what signs to look for. Um, and then some more preventative measures for them, just keep them out of the wind. Um, cause the wind chill can bring the temperature down lower, um, provide additional feed and hay just so that they have more to eat, more energy is kind of being produced inside them to kind of counteract the outside cold temperature. Um, you can provide additional water and then again that dry bedding to provide more of it, it just provides good insulation for them. And that's it. Do you have any questions? Questions, comments? I, I'll make a couple of comments. Uh, I guess I'll take that, Haley, and I'll let you sit down. Thanks. Okay, the question about the beef cow and the dairy cow is good. Now, here's the kicker. That figure for dairy cows are high-producing dairy cows in milk. You know, they're lactating right now. If they're not lactating, they're more like a beef cow. And, you know, cows lactate, let's say, 300, 305 days a year. So they're, they're what's called dry 60 days of the year. But when they're dry, they're also pregnant. And the fetus is making heat, okay? So the dairy cow probably never gets quite like a beef cow, but when the dairy cow isn't milking, they're more like a beef cow. And then there's one caveat with those temperatures, no wind, okay? So hold on one second, I wanna show you my uh, thermal imaging camera and then we'll go on. So what I want to show you now is a thermal imaging camera, and I took some pictures of people, and I just got this device the other day, and let's see if I can uh, show you the pictures that I just took. 
Okay, so let's see. Um, this one right here. Now what this camera does, it shows you um, <clears throat> in the infrared. And it's handy as heck because it gives you an instantaneous reading. And none of those pictures I took today, those are some feral cats and dogs that I was playing around with last night. <coughs> but color is everything. Here's a stove. And I'll start with this one right here. And what happens is it actually reads out temperature right away. Now this is, you know, an electric stove, right? So here in the middle it's cooler because there's no heating element, 106. But down here where there's a heating element, 541 degrees. And so then it also records the minimum because the minimum, 73, is here back beyond the burner on the stove and that would be very close to room temperature, right? So then, playing around with it, here's a water heater in the utility room, so there's some hot there, and you know what's there? The heating elements are behind that wall there. This is a softener, water softener, okay? Here's you, you guys, when uh, Haley was talking. So look at it, quite a deal. And it's instantaneous temperature. And then here's some of the students over by the door over here. There, that's her picture right there. Pretty close to normal on the skin, 96.6. Over here, 72, that's probably room temperature. And so the neat thing about this camera, uh, that's the floor. And there's another one, look at that. Send that picture home to mom. Mom, this is what I look like early in the morning. So the, inter the interesting thing is you can do any surface and you can look for heat leaks or something that's cold or measure it for the, uh, the geckos. And I can all unplug it. 